So once the files are uploaded for WordPress, you can go ahead and go onto your website. So for me, it's going to be tofurisworkshops.com. Create configuration file? Yes, please. Do you have all this information? Yes, we do. So let's go. Database name? Let's go back here. So on the database name, we're going to copy Tofurio test1. And we're going to paste that in there. Username, we're going to delete that. Go into Bluehost. Get this name, Tofurio underscore Lawrence without the E. Paste that there. And my password, what I believe was password, with the capital P. Depending on your host, uh, most cases it's just local host. But if you're using something like GoDaddy or something, you're going to have to use, um, it's a very long code. I, I don't actually know it because every single host is different, but it's a very long one. But generally speaking, by 8 out of 10 times, it's just localhost. Uh, leave the prefix table alone unless you're an advanced user. But for most cases, you don't need to do anything. And then click Submit. And then, all right, Sparky, you've made this far. That's all we need to do, run the installation. And I'm not calling you Sparky, I'm reading it. WordPress actually says Sparky. So site title. This is where you can call it whatever you want. So in this case, I can just say Lawrence's test blog. Username, um, by default, it's going to be admin. But for security purposes, you don't want to use admin because admin is something that hackers would already guess by default. So in this case, put in your name, your nickname, whatever case. So I'm just going to call it tofu for me. And then password. I'm going to put password again. And then your email address. So in case you lose your password, they can send it there. And then this box allow my site to be, you know, to appear in search engines like Google and Technorally. So if you want to be, and I highly suggest this, keep it checked. If you want it to be found by Google through search engines, uh, keep that checked for sure. And then click install WordPress. So, the username is tofu, password is password. Let's log in. Tofu, password, login, and we're in. Let's go down to appearance. Un right next to appearance, on the left bar area, you can click on themes. I'm sorry, hit the drop down and then go with themes. And if you want to install your own, which is what we're going to be doing, install themes. We're going to click the upload because we already have it. Let's browse for it on the desktop. Topia 32, open that, install now. And it's going to upload the file and it's going to extract it and then you're going to have to activate it. So you can preview if you'd like, but I know it's going to work, so let's just click Activate. So right there. Automatically, with just one click, let's reload the page. And voila, look, the whole new website. Okay, now let's talk about the theme. Now once you've activated it, we're going to go under Appearance, under Tofurus Theme Options. So. Right here, we have the rotating images, and you can set different orders by dragging and dropping. That's, you know, whatever you want. You can set links to where you want to go. Remember earlier I said you can direct the link to a specific post or a specific category or whatever you like. You can even set it to Tofiris or Google, anything you want. But just make sure that you add the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Otherwise, it will not work. So make sure you have that in there. You can always delete them just by clicking delete. Oh, and this is full Ajax. So if you were to delete, it com deletes it immediately. If you want to upload a new image, it's 1,000 pixels by 320. And it's also by Ajax, which means that you don't have to refresh the page. It'll actually load immediately. Now, the rotator, which is right here, you have the option to show them on posts, pages, archives, searches, and other locations, or you can turn them all off. That's a very cool option. Continue down. 
Now this is sidebar area. If you recall, right on the left side we have the sidebar. So first we have the logo, we have a profile picture, and a little description. So right here you can actually edit everything. You can change it. You can say this is my profile or this is my friend Lawrence. And then we can update update that later on. Scrolling down further, we have the logo. Also can set the alt text. So it's my great photography just as default. And by default the link location will go back to your home page. So if you want to set it somewhere else, you can do that as well. You can upload a new logo. And remember how I talked about the ads earlier? And you can always turn it off. That's fine too. Anyway, continue on. Twitter. It currently goes to my account, twitter.com forward slash tofurious, but you can change it to yours. This way, if they want to click on it, they can you know, add you as a friend or follow you. But generally speaking, brides or even kids, they don't use Twitter um, from my studies. It's mostly through Facebook, so definitely through put in your Facebook. And this is one of the reasons why I took out the whole Twitter um, com or Twitter quotes in there because I actually found that a little bit distracting because it wasn't actually useful. So make sure you have your Facebook link. So if you have a fan page, go for it. But in my opinion, use a personal site. Your RSS in case you want a different one. Now this is an actual live preview of the website. So this is really cool. You can see everything here and it can actually update itself immediately. So let's just say the header font now my browser isn't big enough, but let's just say I want to change this to another font. And I'm talking about the top browser, the top header right now. It's using Georgia. Let's just say I want to change it to Arial. See how it changed to Arial immediately? We can also change the text size, make it bigger or smaller. We can also change the color. I'm just going to scroll down a bit. I can't because my browser is too small. Let's change it to red just for fun. See how it changed to red already? Everything here from title font, right here, hello world, to content, to sidebar color, font, spacing, the footer, the background, um, everything's customizable. And you can say, for example, the, the background image. You can upload your own image and you can have it repeat left, repeat right, or repeat in the entire background. A lot of times, if you can find these cool patterns, you can upload and then has these uh, nice floral designs. And there's also header, color, uh, content color, footer, I mean, again, everything is customizable, so you can go from there. And here, choose which categories to include in your header na navigation. So under categories, just in case if you say you shoot a lot of things, um, brides and bridal sessions and engagement sessions, and sometimes you do pets. Let's just for fun. If you don't want to include pets in your navigation, you can just not select it. And by default, if you don't select anything, it will just include everything. And under post footers, now it looks a little funny here. Let me expand my browser. Okay. Under post footers, this means right here under the post, the footer. So currently we have view portfolio, contact me, and back to top. If you want to upload your own image, you can. So just click here. Just make sure that's 190 pixels wide. Otherwise, it would probably resize it for you if I'm not mistaken. And the link URL, make sure if you want to link it to your portfolio, make sure you link it there. Or your contact page or back to top. If you want back to top, it's the hashtag top, T-O-P. If you want to change it to, say, follow me on Twitter, you can do that too. Change it right there. Now post separators, now if you recall earlier, this is the thing right here. It's going to separate every single post, so when you have a new post, there's going to be a new separator. This way it puts some space in between all this text and pictures. And you can upload your own, uh, 640 pixels wide, so make sure that your breaker is going to be 640 and as well as your images. Now this is your header and footer code. Now just in case if you have Google Analytics or some form of tracking you want to put in your header or your footer, this goes in here. You can just paste the code in there and then just click save. 